Thatch, you know, here in San Diego, or even when you're playing juniors or college, did you have any mentors or who were your greatest teachers growing up? Um, I mean, I'm so lucky to have the people in my life that I do. Um, you know, my, my parents weren't together when I was growing up. They, they split up when I was really young. Um, but I mean, they did such a good job at, at, at raising me with those circumstances. And, you know, I feel like I got so many great qualities from them, you know, from each of them, right? Like they both contributed so much to me. Um, and they were both athletes in college too, which was huge. So I could kind of rely on them. Um, if I was going through something, you know, as a teenager, young teenager before I moved away or um, even to just life stuff. And I think my, my two biggest mentors would be them. But, you know, like I said, along the way, I've, I've been lucky enough to, to have so many great coaches, teammates, people I could just rely on. And um, I mean, the list goes on and on, but I, I'd say definitely my parents are the top two. Nice. Nice. Yeah, that's huge for kids listening in. Um, I, I'm the same way, you know, coming from a separated family, it's tough sometimes. Yeah. You know, everybody's handed adversity at some point in your life. And we can't go at it alone. We just can't. We got to find people that are going to pick you up, not pull yeah. you down. Yeah. You know, coaches are everything. Um, up to this point in your career and in your life, are there any constant themes that you've seen throughout your life? Um, it's just hard. <laughs> that's one theme that, you know, it, it's hard to, to continue a career. And um, I'm kind of getting on the other side of it here where, you know, I just finished my first year of, of full NHL time. And um, this was easily the hardest year of hockey I've ever had. And, and you know, people think it's going to be the opposite, right? Everyone's like, oh, once you get there, it's fine. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot harder to stay in the NHL than it is to make it. And, um, you know, I feel like every everywhere I've gone in my career, it's always been that challenge of making sure that the next guy's not taking your spot, and and how can I continue to progress my game? And, um, you know, it's it, I say it's hard, but the recipe to to combat that is really easy, and it's just controlling your work, right? And mm -hmm. if you do the work, you're not gonna you're not gonna fail. You're not gonna you know succumb to the pressures of of being in the NHL and um, you know, ultimately you're going to be able to secure a spot. So it's really hard work, but at the end of the day, you just got to do it. Right. So that's the one thing that I think is, uh, is consistent at every level. Absolutely. Pat, what are you about? How do you bring yourself up? Oh, sorry, Jesse. No, no, no. How do you bring yourself up from uh, uh, a trough, right? Where uh, we go, we go up the waves and down the waves. Uh, and it could be in a single day, it could be in a single hour, how you bring yourself back up to get on top of that wave. Yeah, so um, I read a, a goaltending book um, a few years back, and it always talked about how confidence isn't, um, it isn't something that comes and goes. It has to be something that is a foundation for you. And the things that you're confident about have to be at the bottom of your structure. And, you know, so when the wind blows, it might knock a level off or, you know, take two levels off. But at the end of the day, the foundation isn't going to go anywhere. And that was really something that was tested for me this year. It was, it was the first time playing in such a big market in Vancouver where the fans are so passionate. And, you know, there would be times where I had bad games and, you know, I'm already hard enough on myself. But then you go to kind of take your mind off it. You go to social media and you have people – saying some really nasty things that I can't really repeat on this interview, but it's tough, man. It's tough to, to stay confident in those times when you feel like the whole world is pointing a finger at you. And, you know, those are the times where, you know, you got to rely on that foundation that you've built. And, um, you know, it's, it's just about waking up the next day and, and, you know, taking a shower and, and getting back on the ice. And, and like I said, just controlling your work. Yeah. I listened to an interview with Kobe Bryant and the interviewer asked the guy, it ties into exactly what you're saying. Why are you so confident? He said, it's because I work. Yeah. I think work is the foundation of confidence. I think like for me, I, I totally believe that the hockey gods are out there and you know, my, my blood sacrifices is, is the extra hours I put in in the weight room or, or on the ice. So 
you know, it's, sometimes I get frustrated when I'm working hard and not playing well. I'm like, hey, guys, like I did my work this week. Why can't you, <laughs> why can't you cut me a break? But um, I think, you know, if, if, you, if you put in the work, then you don't have to worry about performing because you know you've done everything that you can to prepare yourself. And then, you know, at that point, you can just play. You know, I think so many coaches over the years have told me, just go out and play. You're so good when you just go out and play. Don't think about it. I had no idea what that meant. And then I, it clicked on, it clicked this year where I was like, if you prepare the right way, you do everything humanly possible to make sure that you're ready to play, then you don't have to think because there's nothing else for you to do. You just turn your mind off and every, all the, all the work that you had done is going to come to the forefront and you just got to rely on that. Are you doing anything specifically to practice shutting down your talker, the mind, so to just let your body do what it has to do? Yeah, so I, I do um, before I go on the ice, like for periods, um, I just do like a quick, you know, 30 second affirmation thing. And uh, for me, it's a huge way because the game is so uncontrollable, right? Especially for a goalie, the position of goaltending is so reactive. So there's everything, everything that comes at you, you, you can't control. And so for me, it's instead of letting that overwhelm me, I pick, you know, four or five things in my game that I know I can rely on that are going to be there no matter what, whether it's movement patterns or, you know, good eyes in traffic, just things that little things like that, that I can control. And then when I get to the end of that, I just tell myself like, have fun, shut it off. Like you're playing in the NHL. And, you know, like if I can just remind myself of where I'm at, you know, it just kind of is a weight off the shoulders. My mind is just, you know, it's floating around, it's having a good time, I'm smiling, I'm listening to music in between whistles, and I find that my game is just so much better if I can get to that state of mind, which it's hard to get to that state of mind, you know, <laughs> but that is the goal, ultimately. Yeah, yeah, I can only imagine, you know, you got a big game or whatever, playoff spot, reminding yeah. yourself it's a game at the end of the day. Yeah, for sure. Like for what sure. we're saying on the golf course. Like we were playing so much better and we're just chilling. And Dude, I'm telling you, it's, it's just in life in general. When you're excited to do something, it's so much more fun and you perform better because there's no, like the things that weigh you down are the things that you worry about. Right. Like yeah. if you can, if you can find a mind space where you're only focusing on the things that you love, that you enjoy, like, I mean, there's been studies chemically, like mm -hmm. your brain reacts differently. Like there'll be games where I'm like so negative on myself before the game. Like I can't get into that like free loving, like mind space. Yeah, and I just yeah. force myself to smile. I just do a smile, even though I don't mean it. There's been studies that show when you smile, your brain releases chemicals that allow you to get into a more, you know, more yeah. open mind space. And I find that that really works for me for sure. Yeah. Huge. Um, yeah I mean, studies show that we have 80,000 thoughts a day. Yeah. <sighs> 60,000 thoughts are negative for the average human being. About that. You, find, you find me on a game day, there might be 70,000. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, just little things like that, like the positive affirmations, smiling. Yeah. Um, listening to the song, maybe, like for me, it'll get me in a good headspace. Just little things like that. They add up over time. And the more positive thoughts you have, I think it's, it's easier then to deal with the negativity that's thrown your way because we don't have control. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's so many things that we don't control in life in general. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Um, would you say you have a greatest weakness? I mean, you're you're a confident dude. I mean, you've accomplished a lot. Um, would you say? Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're think, if I think about my game in general, I mean, I think my biggest weakness is just continuing to work on this mental part that we're talking about right now. Mm -hmm. I mean it's so easy to say, like, I can tell you everything that I'm trying to do and, and all the things that should work. But I mean, like you said, like the mind thinks 60,000 negative thoughts a day, like it's hard to control your own mind. And it sounds ridiculous because it's yours. But in my opinion, the brain and the mind are separate entities from from the heart, you know, and yeah. um, I, I think it's something that I really am working on is controlling that a little bit more and being able to find that, you know, that loving headspace instead of that harming headspace. Um, 
but I mean, it's a process, right? It's just like working on your flexibility or working on your, your mobility, whatever it is, like you have to work at it and it's a process for that. And for me, I think that's just been a little bit of a slower process than, than the physical side of things, which is okay. Oh, but yeah. for all of us be working on it. Yeah. For all of us. I know I'm constantly working on that too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and finally, what would you say you love the most about hockey, Thatcher? What's, why do you love hockey so much? What, what is it about the sport? Dude, I, um, I don't know. I mean, there's so much. Like, it's just always been there for me. And, like, I, you know, I went through some things as a kid that were tough and, I just, I knew, I always knew that I could show up to the rink and, and that was my me time. And that was a time when I could smile and laugh and compete and, and hug my friends. And, um, I just always knew that it was reliable. And, and I think that's why I was drawn to it so much. And as I've gone through the years, like the camaraderie that you have with your teammates is just like, Honestly, that nowadays, like right now, that's like my favorite part of the game is, you know, being able to, to laugh with your friends and, and tell stories. And, you know, everyone's kind of been through the gauntlet getting to where they are in life. And, you know, I think hockey players kind of see each other on, on the same level just because they have similar experiences. And, you know, like we went to, you know, we went golfing the other day. Like we're, we're all hockey guys just sitting around playing cards, like telling stories, like camaraderie with teammates just being a good teammate being there for your friends is is super fun to me yeah yeah I know for me personally like one of my best friends we met in our first year of house before mites like so many of my best friends were from hockey growing up yeah you just always have that to lean on so you know, any of the kids that are listening right now there's probably buddies that you have that you met in Mike scores that you're going to be close with for the rest of your life you know cherish those relationships and I know for me personally, those relationships have helped me get through a lot in life. And I'm sure the same for you, Dash. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I met McCray when I was, you know, seven, eight years old, you know, and yeah. we're, he's coming over in about an hour or two here to hang out. So we're, we're 25, 26 years old now, still, still kicking the can. <laughs>